guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I wanna talk to you about building a portfolio. Now, when you're starting out, you might be doing some tutorials and you might be using the things you build in the tutorial to put into your portfolio. And there's nothing wrong with that and that's how I started. Also, I built a lot of smaller apps that something you would call toy apps, meaning they don't really do anything, but they're just small apps that you created, maybe a to-do list, maybe a tic-tac-toe game, or something along those lines that you would put in your portfolio when you're starting out. But the truth is, when you're building a portfolio to get hired, it has to be more substantial. Because remember, you're wanting to break into web development. You're not just competing against other self-taught developers or other people in your situation. You're also competing against people who went to school and got a CS degree or maybe been coding for a while. In today's video, I want to talk about what I'm doing for my project portfolio and give you a cool tip of what you could use as your back end. Because the important part is you want your app not only to have a beautiful front end, but you want it to be a dynamic website. And becoming a full stack developer from the start is very difficult. A lot of people try to jump into it, but honestly, you will bite more than you could chew. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you one secret that I use to help me set up an amazing back end and also talk a little bit about my app and kind of what you should do for your first portfolio. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul and I talk about switching careers into web development later in life. So if this is something you're interested, consider subscribing. All right, let's jump into my computer and I'll show you what we got. Hey guys, here we are at my desktop and the first thing I wanna do is show you the app that I'm building. Now this app is still in it's early phases, like super, super early. So it doesn't have a lot of functionality, but I just wanna give you an overview of what it is, the technologies I use, and one little trick that I use to help me set up a quick backend so I could focus more on my front-end development. So here's my app, it's called Core Share, and the idea here is eventually you should be able to log in here and you should be able to create your own lesson playlist using free resources like a YouTube video. And the whole idea here, I wanted to make this for myself because even though I love YouTube, the problem is it's very distracting. I wanna be able to take the YouTube videos or lesson sets that I like, I like to create my own playlist and have them loaded in this website. So the idea is once you log in, you could have your own lesson plans. And what I wanna do is add an ability for someone to take notes on what they're learning and other things that other online platforms have. But the idea here, it's all gonna be free because you're literally using resources off YouTube. And it's a win-win because every time you play the YouTube video here, the creator still gets the views, but you're watching these videos on your site and the additional function here is that you're going to be able to not only create playlists but also you'll be able to take notes on what you're learning and come back to them so let me give you a quick example so, so right now when you sign up you have the home page which is nothing here yet I'm still working on it then you have the videos page right here and Right now, I just have three basic videos, but the idea that I like here, and like going to YouTube, I could come here and be like, these are the videos that I'm interested in, these are the videos I could watch. My additional goal for this section is to add a like and share button, and this way, when you like a video, it's going to be added to your favorite. And I'm also gonna have a button, add to lesson. So if you wanted to make a lesson plan with videos from YouTube, it would be very easy. Then I have a blog section here, and I'll constantly keep loading because right now there's no data. I'm in the process process working on it and so when you click in here you're able to sign in so I have username Aria that's my fiance's name and once you're logged in you're taken to this section and as you could see you're gonna have this lesson section so this is where you're gonna have all the lessons that either you or other users created using either their own videos or videos that they found on YouTube and then we have the dashboard section. This section will have the videos that you decided to share from YouTube. It will have the lessons, which basically playlist the videos that you put together into a lesson plan. This will have blog section. And right now I'm gonna only allow myself to add blogs uh, for this website, but eventually you guys will have your own blogs where you could talk about what you're learning, what you're doing. This section is gonna be for your profile. And this is a section that I added here for bugs. So let's say you're using my app and you find some something that is not working well, you'll be able to add a bug here to submit it and I'll be able to review it and fix it. So as users, you get to help me improve this app. And this is the basic idea here. And if I sign out, I will sign out. And currently 
you're probably wondering where are these videos coming from well obviously they're being shared from YouTube but the secret here is that they're not actually being shared from YouTube but they're being shared from a backend and I'll talk about the technologies that I'm using here in a second but the idea here as you could see here I have this Heroku app that I will talk more about in just a minute but this is actually an API endpoint so if I could go to videos here and because I'm allowing for public queries you could go here and it's going to show you an array of JSON objects that you could see that I have videos here here. and when you hit this API point you will have access to this data now certain data you can't see if you're not authenticated but that's a whole topic for another discussion but for now as you could see I have a back end it didn't take me a lot to set up and what I'm able to do is I'm able to focus on the front end of the application and I don't have to be bothered going back and forth creating the front end creating the back end and running into issues and the magic to all this is Strapi. it allows you to design a fast API and manage it very easily and when I say managing very easily I really do mean very easily if I go into admin section here I'm able to log in and this is literally like using WordPress or other sites like this so as I log in BAM I'm already in my back end so if I wanted to add another video to my app it's very easy for me I created these fields already so all I have to do is click add video let me go here and the way I designed this is if you have a video URL that you like who's that handsome guy anyway once you have a video that you like or want to add into your lesson you just copy the link I made it very easy you go here and you put the URL and I'm gonna say intro to coding after 30 you put the date and stuff like that and right now by the way I'm adding all these videos from the back end that I created with Strapi because it's easier but eventually you'll be able to add all this data right from my app but right now this is just an easy way for me to add data not worry about back end and allow me to basically continue to design and not be bugged down by trying to learn front end and back end together because it's very difficult if someone tells you they could learn full stack development in three months I'm gonna say it's a joke it's not true the only way is if you're taking a boot camp and it's like day and night for next 90 days three months you're just breathing eating you know full stack developer and what I would argue is that even if you do learn you're not gonna learn everything you're just gonna learn just enough if you start applying right after boot camp to be able to get a job but if you don't apply Apply after bootcamp right away what's gonna happen you're gonna forget a lot of that stuff and you're not gonna get a job so the point is it doesn't take three months to learn this stuff it does take a lot more so my argument here is that by using other technologies like strappy you're leveraging other technologies available to you and you're able to focus on more of a front-end development first once you get your job great you could learn whatever you want but for now the goal is to make it super simple so if once I reload this and go into video sure enough look at this you have my video that I added it and strap and this is it the beauty is I have an actual API that is actually deployed so if I go here to my deployment link here you could see this is a production environment the server is right so I have a working API I can't stress this enough I have a back end for which I don't really have to worry too much about and I'm able to focus on creating my front end and again if I want to log in I would just go into my admin section and BAM I'm in here it loads up and then I have my nice dashboard to add stuff but eventually you will be able to sign in and be able to add the information from the dashboard so you'll be able to go into let's say my videos and you'll be able to have a button here at videos so it'll have the form you'll be able to type at videos but anyway this is I don't want to bore you to that but I just want to show you the overview so here's the point this app I'm pretty proud of it I think it looks pretty awesome even though it's at like 5% complete but here's the deal you have to focus on creating something for your portfolio that is able to to connect to an API kind of like I demonstrated and allow you to have a dynamic website with changing content like I have here with videos and with other things to come before I jump into and show you what I'm using for my back end and then I'll make a designated video talking about strappy what I want to do is just show you the technologies used and also tell you why doing full stack right from the get-go is a terrible idea because this is a first of all you need to know HTML CSS and JavaScript as a bare minimum that alone could take you three months to learn of hardcore studying to be at least somewhat 
efficient in it so you could do other things. But on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I'm using React. So you have to learn and understand React. I'm also using Redux for state management, which is if you have state in your React app and you want to pass it down to other components, but you don't want to do prop drilling where you just pass it to the child, to the child of a child, to the child, and whatever it takes forever, you use Redux to manage state. It's a whole thing to learn that took me forever. Then I'm also using React routers, not as hard to learn, but that's something if you're building React applications, you need to know. On top of that, I'm using a Postgres SQL that is what maintains my data. So not only do you have to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you also have to know React, Redux, React routers, and some sort of database. Now, some people will use Firebase. I love Firebase, but I stopped using it because there's no jobs that ask for Firebase experience. It is great if you're creating your own apps just for yourself, but when it comes to building apps that kind of simulate what you would be doing at work, I would definitely look into learning some sort of SQL type of database. And the reason I'm doing Postgres SQL because it's I could easily work on Windows and on Mac. At work, we just use Windows, so we use SQL Server Manager and the Windows SQL, but that's not the point. The point is, it's already a lot of technology. So between React, Redux, React Routers, Postgres SQL, then the question is, well, how do you deploy your apps? I love to deploy my apps on Netlify, especially if you're doing like React, stuff like that. It's free, it's easy. I know I could deploy everything on Heroku, but I decided to deploy my front end on Netlify and deploy my back end on Heroku. And so the beauty of this is that I have an app that's not living on my local machine, but it's actually deployed and you guys could go visit. But as you can see, it's a lot of things, a lot of stuff to learn. And by focusing on learning Node from start to build your backend, it is a lot of work. So instead of trying to create everything from scratch, focus on your front end development and use tools as Strapi to allow you to be able to manage your content. Like this is easy for me. I want to add a user. I could do it here. I want to add a post. I could do it here. You know, I want to add another video like I did before. I could do it here. And this is much easier to set up than to build a backend from scratch. Now in my next video, I'll show you how to set this up in your local environment very easily with react and we'll use this quick start guide it's really simple all it is is just running this code and you're pretty much done and if you like npm that's all you do bam you're done and you're able to start creating a back end very easily for your front end and now you could start building those apps i know i'm kind of jumping all over the place but here's the thing when you're looking to build an app it can't be a toy app and i kind of mentioned that before it has to be something more significant like building a to-do app which is fine i've done it building a little tic-tac-toe game or something like that i've done it my first portfolio that's why i don't have one right now like i deleted a lot of it because my first portfolio had a lot of beginner projects that were impressed so at the time for me because i didn't know what i was doing but at someone who's looking to hire you they want something more flushed out something more professional and cleaner looking a lot of people think you have to build everything from scratch build a rocket or a car from scratch you can't even normal people don't build cars from scratch you know the engine is built somewhere then it's delivered to the factory they put it in the car so i know i'm babbling on but i want you guys to understand this important the importance that you guys have to use the technology that's available there for you to be able to create your app so unlike if i showed you my first i'm gonna go to netlify because i have some ugly projects there comparatively speaking well i don't have my very first ugliest project but this is netlify where i host my stuff like i'm gonna <laughs> broken music player that's a great example let me see um i'm gonna show you this site here because i was very proud of this site at the time and this is uh created with react it's pretty awesome you know but the problem with this is just a simple site there is no functionality you know what i'm saying it's just good for information and something like this it is good as you're learning but i don't think it's strong enough of a portfolio piece to be able to land your job if you look at this 
and it has a contact form here let's connect it's beautiful you click apply it saves your email it's nice but that's about it for the functionality and i would argue that this is even though it was awesome when i first built it i'm not happy with it as being a portfolio piece hence i'm redoing a lot of things for my portfolio as you could see this is already much more involved because even though it's not even five percent complete you have all these sections you're going to have lessons you'll be able to create lessons even already now you could sign out you could sign in okay you know it's a lot more complex and this is what other people are going to want to see they're going to want to see a nice looking portfolio that has some functionality outside of some simple to do i mean you have to create something that's more substantial you have to understand especially if you're switching careers when you're looking to get another job you're not just competing with yourself or other people in your situation you're also competing with a lot of college graduates and computer science degree students and the benefit of a portfolio especially when it's awesome is when you have a portfolio and someone graduated out of college and maybe they don't for whatever reason you will be more qualified because you have an actual project that took experience to build enough about me talking and jibber jabbering I'm gonna just quickly go through strappy here just one more time and this is something I'm gonna make a video next so strappy I highly recommend it it's the easiest way to get started and set up an API and backend for you to start making awesome projects like this one now I mentioned people use fire Firebase. People like Firebase. I'm quickly going to show you here. So Firebase here is another great platform to be able to create a backend for your database and stuff like that. It's cool in some ways. The only way that it's not cool, and I love Firebase. I have so many apps that I've did with Firebase. The reason it's not cool is because my job did not ask me if I knew Firebase. It did not require Firebase. It did not care about Firebase. It just cared about, do you know SQL? Do you know how to work with MySQL databases? Uh, luckily, yes, because I took time to learn it. So when you're starting out and you're looking to get a job, you have to get a job based on technologies that people are using. And so I go with React because I'm a JavaScript developer. Some people recommend C Sharp, ASP.NET, doesn't matter if it's React, ASP.NET, or some other popular technology. It has to be popular. It has to be something that people are hiring for. So when you're first looking to get your first job, it's very important to learn technologies that make sense and you figure that out by doing actual job searches in your area so with that being said i just wanted to give you a quick overview hopefully this was helpful and you found some value out of it in my next video i will show you how to set up strappy backend with your first react app locally on your computer and then you could start messing around and start working on your project all right guys as you could see you don't have to build everything from scratch especially if you're just starting out and what you want to do is leverage technologies that are out there so sure i learned html css javascript and react to build my front end but instead of spending another three to six months and learning how to create a back end from scratch i use the leverage of strappy as you could see it works just as amazing and what it does it allows you to focus on one aspect of web development while not being bogged down by the other but the truth is to get any competency in anything that you do it does take time so it's kind of ludicrous to me to think that after three months you could be a full stack developer and this is why i wanted to show you what i did in this video is because i wanted you to know it's okay to leverage other technologies out there to create a very good looking project something that you could add to your portfolio and get a job with so once again thanks for watching i hope you found this video educational and entertaining and with that being said i'll see you guys next time and don't forget to subscribe of course if you like it if you hate it at least tell me why but anyway leave a comment and i'll see you guys later